Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. It's a bit cold tonight so I am wearing a jacket and look how glam it is. Very gay, as am I. See, I haven't changed y'all. I'm still wearing my blue, just with a little bit of a twist. I'm going to be sharing products that I have sadly fallen out of love with. I know I'm being really dramatic, but you know, it's skincare. It's close to home, y'all. These are products that at one point were some of my favorite skincare products in existence, but now I no longer love, I no longer use, and I no longer, you know, really have the inclination to buy or share with you guys. And a lot of these products I used to be obsessed with, y'all. I used to talk about them all the time. They were my favorite, but you know, we grow we change our preferences change and I no longer you know really feel the desire to use these products really at all if ever damn that's hardcore I actually got this idea from Tati she did a video talking about makeup products that she's fallen out of love with and I thought I would put a skincare twist on it and honestly this is kind of a long time coming because these are products that I have wanted to talk about like why I no longer like them but we're just gonna do them all in one video one shot shot to the heart and you'll find out. Okay, I don't actually know the rest of the song. I don't really listen to rock. I know, slaughter me in the comment section. I do want to preface this by saying all of these products are from brands I absolutely love. So this is by no means me saying that I don't like anything from the brand. These are just single products. So I still like these brands, but that does not change the experience with the products because it doesn't matter if you're a brand that I like. Every brand inevitably has products that we're not going to enjoy and I just want to share my own. So let's get into it. So the first product is the one that instantly came to mind when I thought of making this video. It just came to the front of my prefrontal cortex. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say. It was the very first thing that popped into my head when I thought about making this video, and that is the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen. There was a time that I absolutely loved this product. I talked about it all the time on my channel. I was obsessed with it. It was just such a nice formula that was so lightweight on the face. It was mattifying so that you didn't look extra shiny. It had a slight tint to it to make sure that it offset any white cast, and it just was a product that I really enjoyed. And then I noticed that I repurchased a bottle, and when I put it on my skin, it felt kind of gritty and sandy on the face. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't know if I got a product that is like a little bit expired or maybe the formula accidentally turned or something like that. I really wasn't sure what was going on. And then I started reading through some of your guys' comments saying the exact same thing, that the formula was just really gritty and felt like it was kind of scrubbing the face almost when you put it on. And that's when I was like, hold up, wait a second. As Queen Alyssa Edwards said, what the f is going on here on this day? And then I purchased another bottle and noticed the exact same experience and I was like wait what happened? I loved this formula so much. And I'm not sure if it's because they changed the formula, which would kind of surprise me because it was a pretty, you know, recently launched product. So then I thought like maybe the formula changes as it sits in the bottle. I don't know. The experience I had with the first one or two bottles that I purchased was really, really good. And then after that, for some reason, it, it just kind of all fell apart. And I know that's the case because I've seen a lot of your guys' comments saying the same thing. And when I was reading through the comment section of the Sephora reviews, everyone was kind of reiterating the point that I share, which is girl. It feels really gritty on the face. I don't know what happened. Like maybe it was the first batch that they launched that, you know, had some technical issues in the formula and they have redeveloped it since. I don't know. I haven't tried one of these since I purchased the last two, but yes, sadly, I have fallen out of love with this product and it makes me very sad. So it kind of bums me out. But if you are someone who's looking for a very similar experience, I would say the Bliss Blockstar SPF 30 is the most similar experience I've been able to find to the First Aid Beauty Tinted Sunscreen. It's lightweight, it's mattifying, it has a slight tint to it gives you all those same benefits at a more affordable price point. And I think it's an awesome alternative. And hopefully First Aid Beauty, if you are watching this, because they are a brand I absolutely love. Like I talk about First Aid Beauty all the time. I am obsessed with their products. But if you are able to, you know, reformulate it or fix that issue, that would be amazing because I will be the first on the bandwagon to repurchase it and try it again. Next up is the You To The People Superberry Dream. <coughs> oh God. <laughs> Good God, am I dying? The Use to the People Superberry Dream Overnight Mask. Now, way back when, when this first launched, I was really obsessed with it. You know, you guys know I love Use to the People. They're one of my favorite brands out there. And I really liked the consistency and the texture of this formula because it's really nourishing overnight to make sure you wake up with your skin more moisturized. And, you know, it was a product I really liked. But I was able to talk to Use to the People a little bit more. I figured out that some of the products do use more fragrance than I originally thought, which led me to have a little bit of second thoughts when it came to this formula specifically. Now, for a lot 
lot of the use of people products, I, I think they're fine. Like the cleanser, I think it's fine that it has fragrance because it's a wash off formula, but some of their leave on treatments do have more fragrance than I typically like to use. And especially when it comes to an overnight mask, the skin is going into recovery mode overnight. And for my skin, I really don't want it to have to battle any potential sensitivity or irritation from the fragrance that is included. And when I picked up my products from Resmelda, I was like, oh yeah, this does have a lot of fragrance. It is very potent. And for that reason, I was like, you know what? I'm not sure if I'm going to continue using this product just because, you know, of my positioning with fragrance. Y'all know the drill. And it just kind of changed my opinion on the formula overall. But shortly afterwards, I discovered my favorite overnight moisturizing cream, the one that I cannot live without. I talk about it all the time on my channel, the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Barrier Peptide Cream, my true obsession. I started using that product shortly afterwards and fell in love. And I've honestly never really looked back. And it has a very similar consistency to the use of people's Super Berry Night Cream. So I'm just using that one instead. And because of that fragrance, I'm no longer using the use of the people one. Don't hate me, use of the people. I love y'all. Next is the Tarte Set and Protect Powder Sunscreen. Now this one does pain me to talk about because there was a point in time where I used this every single day without fail. Well, not even just every single day, like multiple times per day. Back with one of my old jobs, I used to be in the sun a lot. So reapplying a powder sunscreen was one of the easiest ways to make sure I was getting very minimal, but still some sunscreen protection and making sure that my skin didn't get too oily in the humidity. And I loved this product for that. But I did notice that when it came to the brush applicator on the powder sunscreen, it got really dirty really quickly. And when you're reapplying a product like four to five times a day, like I was, it is important that whatever applicator you're using, it's clean, it's sanitary. And this just was not the case with that brush. It got really, really dirty. And the issue with cleaning the brush is that the powder is dispersed through a hole on the top. And when I did try to clean it, water would get in that hole and block any of the powder from actually getting onto the brush itself. So it would kind of impact the ability for any product to get on my face. And I got to the point where it was really frustrating. And on top of that, I no longer worked in a job where I was outside a lot. So I didn't need to necessarily worry about really frequently reapplying powder sunscreen to my face. And since then, it's not that I don't like powder sunscreen. I think it is nice, but I just didn't feel the need to use it as much anymore. And realistically, when it comes to powder sunscreen, the amount of SPF protection you're getting on your face is so, so minimal that with me not being in that environment anymore, there really wasn't a reason to use it. And so kind of those two issues combined is why I stopped using the product. No mas. I think in the future, it would be awesome if Tarte could make that product where you can remove the brush and clean it separately from the entire unit. I believe super good powder sunscreens do have that benefit. But yeah, I haven't used this product in a while and I haven't really felt the urge to use a powder sunscreen. So because of that, this is a product that I have sadly fallen out of love with. And the next one, funny enough, is from a brand that I just mentioned that I absolutely love, Skin Fix. Their recovery redness overnight Creme? Sorry, Redness Recovery Overnight Mask. Skin Fix was kind enough to send me some products and this was one of the products that they included and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for me. My skin gets so red, it gets so irritated. This is gonna be an amazing overnight mask that I can use to really calm it down and help the sister skin out. So I was super excited to try it. I started using it every other night and I noticed that my skin was starting to break out and have more sensitivity and I was confused because I was like, wait, what would be causing this? I couldn't really figure it out for a few weeks and honestly, this product was at the bottom of the list of things that I suspected could be breaking me out because it is a redness recovery overnight mask. But after a while I realized, okay, maybe this product is the issue. So I phased it out of my routine and immediately I noticed that my breakout cleared. And that's when I was like, aha, this is the product to blame. And honestly, this is not me bashing the formula. I actually think the formula is really good. I just don't believe that my skin personally agrees with it. It's just one of those situations where you'll always come across a product that doesn't agree with your skin. You're gonna break out, you're gonna have sensitivity. And it just is what it is. There's nothing you can really do about it. And it makes me sad because I love the brand. I love the ingredients. I love the consistency, but it just did not agree with my skin. I immediately noticed an improvement once I stopped using it. But you know me, bitch. I will continue using the triple of it barrier peptide cream for the rest of my life. And honestly, I'm I'm not really upset about not being able to use this product anymore because that moisturizer is good enough for me. Another one, and this may come as a surprise for some of you guys who have not been watching my channel for like the past like three years. Cause I did used to talk about how much I liked it before I realized that, you know, skincare doesn't have to be super fucking expensive. It is the SK2 Facial Treatment Lotion. I know, SK2, I used and loved an SK2 product, who'da thunk? There was a point in time where I really did enjoy using this product. I will say SK2 essences feel really nice on the face. Now, don't get it mistaken, this wasn't their typical essence that costs like $250. I would never spend that much money on a skincare product. This was their facial treatment lotion, which I believe was like $75 at the time. To its credit, it does last a long time. Like the bottle lasted me forever. And I liked it because you got some of their Patera essence, but you also got some exfoliant 
exfoliating acids like salicylic acid, malic acid, and I believe lactic acid. I don't know, there's a blend of acids, but I liked it for the salicylic acid that it was included because I was like, oh, I'm getting two steps in one. Essence and exfoliation and toner. Since then, I've kind of honestly fallen out of love with toners. I know some people love them and I think they can be great if you have really dry skin, but for my skin personally, it's just another step in the skincare routine that can be accomplished in a serum that I don't need to add in my routine. Not to mention the price point, like $75 for a toner. Nowadays, like that is completely out of the question. There's no way I would spend that much money on really any product with maybe a few exclusions, but especially for a toner. And now when I look back, I'm like, girl, what were you doing? What were you thinking? Who hurt you? I don't know why I felt justified to spend $75 on a toner. Like girl, pfft, you did not make that much money. Calm the hell down. And honestly, now I can get much better benefits in like a salicylic acid serum. The one I use on a day-to-day -day basis is the Selfless by Hiram Salicylic Acid and Sea Kelp Pore Clearing and Oil Control Serum. Of course, my love. Super lightweight, you get the benefits of salicylic acid that you can use every single day. Or if you are someone who does like a toner and wants that exfoliation experience in that toner as well, there's like the Sum By Me AHA, BHA, PHA toner. That one is awesome. It has a great blend of ingredients. I've talked about how much I love that one. And it is much less expensive than the SK2 one. So yeah, that was kind of easy to fall out of love with, to be honest. It's like a toxic X, really easy to get rid of. Actually, no, that's a lie. Those are the hardest to get over. Anyway, I've moved on from that product. And finally, the last one is the Herbivore Blue Tansy Resurfacing Mask. If you watch my videos from like two years ago, you will know that I was obsessed with this product. I talked about it all the time because it was such a beautiful experience. Like I will give it credit where credit is due. That mask exfoliates your skin so beautifully. It feels so nice afterwards. It would calm down my redness, exfoliate my skin just enough to get it to where I want it to be without over exfoliating it. It's just a product I was obsessed with. But as I used it and continued repurchasing the product, I noticed that the formula would turn badly really, really quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean like within three weeks of purchasing the product, the formula would start to develop. I don't want to call it mold, but it would kind of look like it was in the mold family, like maybe a sibling or a cousin to mold. The formula would look like it went bad. The texture would completely change and it would kind of develop a bad odor. And I would get to the point where I would throw out almost full jars of the product just to repurchase a new one that didn't have that issue. But every single time I repurchased it, it would run into the same issue. And it sucks because this mask is so good. Like I loved it for my skin. It was so amazing the results it would give. But as I started to look through the ingredient list, I realized that for this product, Herbivore didn't use preservative ingredients. And preservatives are really important in a skincare product, especially one that is a jar that has that much exposure to air. Preservatives are important to make sure that the product doesn't go bad because when a product does turn bad, it can cause a bunch of other issues with the skin that you just don't want to deal with. And there's some people and brands that say that products that have natural extracts or an ingredient like vitamin E act as proper preservatives, but they really don't, especially in this type of jar where you have to open it and it's not in like an airtight container. You are running the risk of the product turning bad really quickly quickly and that is what I noticed with at least five jars of the product which sucks because I love that product so much I would say it was one of my holy grail products but since then I've just felt hesitant to repurchase the product and reuse it especially knowing that I would only get like one to two uses because when it comes to a resurfacing mask there is no way that I'm going to use that entire product in a month I don't exfoliate my skin that often it's just not good for my skin and I want to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that the product didn't turn or grow mold but when I had that experience with like five jars it just makes Makes me hesitant to use it. And because of that, I haven't repurchased the mask in a while. I really hope that Herbivore can reformulate the product with some proper preservatives because I do feel like that would at least help the issue. But until that happens, I'm probably not going to be repurchasing the product and it makes me really, really sad. I want to love it. And when it comes to exfoliating masks, there aren't really a ton that I use because I do prefer exfoliating my skin every other day with a gentle exfoliating serum rather than doing a mask. But the once a month that I do enjoy exfoliating my face, I always end up using the Ordinary AHA Peel. That one is super strong so you have to be really careful with it. I only leave it on my skin for like five to seven minutes before I wash it off. But it's really good. It's effective every time I use it. I don't notice sensitivity. And yeah, until I find a different one, that's just the one I'm going to continue using. If you guys do have any recommendations for exfoliating masks, let me know in the comment section down below. I am always down to try. But yeah, the blue tansy mask makes me very sad. Those are all the products that I wanted to bring up in today's video, but I am really interested in knowing what your products are that you fell out of love with. Tell me why in the comment section down below you used to love a product, but you no longer love it anymore. I mean, it's the skincare world. It's just the nature of the game. We're gonna love a product at one point in time and then as we discover more products and learn more about our skin, our preferences are gonna change and that's just the way it goes. So let me know what yours are. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.